Um, and then um, August the 6th, next Saturday, um, we will be doing an installation service for Pastor Janetta Burtz, Pastor Artist Burtz's yeah, yeah. wife, yeah. will be uh, taking the helm. She'll be taking the responsibilities as the pastor of Battlefield Church. Yeah. Battlefield Church. Yeah. Or yeah. Battlefield Church. Yeah. Battlefield Church of Christ. Yeah. Battlefield. Pastor Breon will, will give her the charge and I'll do the session, I'll do the yeah. service. So it's next Saturday. Um, probably won't, I, I probably get that information out to y'all sometime. I'll, I'll get it out to y'all. And Tina can put it on the thread or something like that for people who might want to come and show up for that service. But it's going to be um, at the church that Pastor Burt started. So, um, and it should be good because I'm glad that she's at least desiring to, to keep the work going. I don't know how long that will go, but I mean, I'm glad that she will at least, she's, she's stepping in, she's, she's stepping in his shoes. My Lord. She wants to keep what, what God started with him. She wants to keep going. And, then, yeah. and so, and, and yeah, no question. So we'll see. And, uh, you know, we'll be there. Once I get that information, I'll send it. We'll put it on the thread. Whoever would like to come and support, and uh, they can. So, and that's all we're going to do. We're going to do the church anniversary in October, and that's it. Amen. Amen. That's it. So, so now, uh, without any further ado, uh, Deacon Carl Jones is coming. One of the sons of the church is coming this morning, and Amen. he's got something to share with y'all concerning the promises of God. So, uh, write notes, be attentive, listen closely, and learn something. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on and put your hands together for yes. the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. He says where there are two or three God yes. uh -huh. in his name, yes. he's there. There am I in the midst. Amen. Yes. So we're not looking at the numbers. We want to make sure the numbers count. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Certainly we thank God for a pastor. Amen. Put your hands yeah. together for the pastor. Yeah. And, his, and his wonderful yeah. wife who is yeah. standing with him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. No matter what, she yeah. is in the cut. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Building him up, keeping him strengthened. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. God is good. Amen. Yeah. All the time. All, All the time. time. God, is God, is God is good. Amen. Yeah. No matter how you feel in your body, yeah. the Lord is still good. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He'll give you enough strength to roll yourself yeah. out of the bed yeah. Yeah. and get into that hot shower. Yeah. Yeah. Loosen them old bones up. Loosen yeah. everything, the ligaments and the joints. That's right. And make your way to the house of the Lord. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Why the scriptures are sufficient. Why are they? Why the scriptures are sufficient. Amen. Amen. There are many people who say they believe the Bible and are very opinionated about certain topics to the point of being downright hostile. Uh, uh, but if you poke them just a little, you'll find that they haven't read through the book once and up. cannot fully explain to you why they believe what they believe. Come on, uh, now. To them, they just believe. Come on. All right. And some people can get away with that for a while, but in this life, we all come to a point where everybody's belief will be tested yeah. and tried by fire to see what manner and what substance it's made of. Yeah. yeah. That we may receive a reward or if what we have built our lives are, it will be burnt up. Not uh, up. There has to be a foundation that your faith holds on to that is greater than what somebody else told you yeah. or what you heard in passing. Yeah, right. yeah. It has to become something so sure to you that you know that you know that you know, you know, that, you know. that what you believe is just as real as the person standing in front of you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about an anchor of the soul yeah. that cannot be moved no matter the storms of life that come to strengthen our convictions and yeah, spiritual muscles, yeah, yeah. all because we have taken the first step 
to finally put our hope in the right person, yeah. the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. We get saved and we get excited about this hope, but we can't right there at the salvation experience and succumb to the dangers of going no further in pursuing the one who first pursued us. Yeah. Yeah. First Peter 3 and 15 admonishes, uh, admonishes us all saying, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts uh -huh. and be ready to always give an answer to every man who asketh you a reason for the hope that is in you yeah. Yeah. with meekness and with fear. Yeah, the Bible is saying you got to know how to share what you know yeah. and what it is that you believe yeah. right. skillfully and with the right attitude. Yeah, I believe what I believe because mama and daddy forced me to go to church on Sundays. It's not a good enough answer. I converted to Christianity because my husband is a Christian and I thought it was the right thing to do. Ah. It's not a good enough answer. That's right. Yeah. No, we all have to be at a place where we can say, I have searched the scriptures for myself. All right. And I know this is the word of the Lord for me, for what I'm going through right now. All right. Otherwise, you have entrusted your eternal destiny into someone else's hands. Yeah. When God has told you from his word to work out your own soul salvation Woo. with trembling and with fear. Yes. Yeah. Do, you, do you mean I have a responsibility to devote myself to what I said I believed I when I first that. confessed faith in Christ? Come on now. Yes. Deacon, do you mean I have to become an active part of a community of like-minded people uh, and understand how to conduct myself among my new spiritual family? Go ahead, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Deacon, yeah. do you mean that I can take God at his word, talk to him about what I don't understand, mm -hmm. and get to know him more to increase my faith and then share yeah. it with others? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Why continue down the road of getting all your information from the internet? Go ahead, preacher. The hottest gossip blogs from some Instagram celebrity or from fake news channels when yeah. God wants to reason with you from the scriptures yeah. so you can walk together in agreement with him. Yeah. And so today, I want to deal with why the scriptures are sufficient. Not right. There's a lot of people that say they believe the Bible, but they have no idea why they believe on, what they believe. All right. Help us. We've been on this theme within a theme for a minute now, and today I just want to give you a little evidence and reasons to keep on believing. All right. Yeah. To give you some ammo to deal with people on your job that don't have no sense. Uh, people that are in your home that have no hope. Uh, yeah. who want you to be hopeless. Woo. Just like them. Go ahead. Look out, Doc. They say that misery love company. Yeah. I'm going to give you five reasons why the scriptures are sufficient with a focus today on the last one. And then maybe later I'll get back and give you more thorough information on the other ones. All right. Right now, the first one is the nature of God. Yeah. Right. The scriptures are supernatural and sufficient in themselves All right. because they unveil the mystery of the redemption of man by Christ's incarnation and his resurrection from the dead. Yeah. And within these pages is the mind of God, uh -huh. the purposes of God, uh -huh. his counsel, yeah. his will, his plans and loving thoughts towards us and to all of his creation. Yeah. Yeah. It is only through him revealing himself to us through his word penned by holy prophets and apostles that we can understand that God is a spirit uh -huh. and we must worship him in, in spirit, spirit and in the truth of who he is. Yeah. Religion did not pursue him first. Uh -huh. He pursued us first. Yeah. We got to get relationship right first right. before we can get our religion right. Come on. Right. Romans chapters 1 through 3 says Woo. this. In creation and in all of the created order, we see God's attributes and his Godhead revealed so that you are without excuse, O oh man, yeah. whoever you are. Yeah. His nature is not that of created man that fell from grace. 
How many know we're talking about Adam and Eve? Amen? Yeah. Numbers 23 and 19 puts it like this. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall it not be made good? Once he says it, it will forever stand, and his word will go forth and accomplish whatsoever he intends for it to do. Yeah. He is eternal. Yeah. He is immutable. And he is the Lord who does not change. All right. It should bring you comfort today, church, to know that you can trust in a God who is faithful and who is light. And in him, the Bible says that there is no darkness at all. He is truth. He is omniscient. Which means he knows everything about you before you were even born. Yeah, As a matter yeah. of fact, he knows everything about everything. That's right, yeah. that's right. You can trust him as the author and the finisher of your faith, uh -huh. the orchestrator and the architect of your walk. That's right. He's all powerful that's right. and nothing shall separate us that's from right. the love of God, that's which right. is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's right. Jesus reveals the Father and says he is greater than all. And no man can pluck us out of his hand. Yeah. He says, be ye holy, for I am holy, yeah. says the Lord. Yeah. And he said to Moses, yeah. in the burning bush, to take off thy shoes yeah. from off thy feet. Yeah. For the place where thou standest is holy ground. Oh, yeah. It was ordinary ground before, yeah. but when God showed up and started giving Moses yeah. his holy word, that place became oh. sanctified. And glorified. Yeah. And the Bible says that Moses' face shined yeah. with God's glory. Yeah. Yes. Holy. We can rely on the scripture yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. that revealed to us the trustworthy nature of a holy God yeah, yeah. who himself put on flesh to die in our place and to destroy the sin that has separated us from him. Yeah. God did it for us. Amen. Did it for us. If God did that for us, surely we can go to him for anything and everything yeah, yeah, yeah. that we have need of. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? He will do it. He will do it. We yeah. believe in the sufficiency yeah. of the scriptures today because we understand that we cannot separate his word from the nature of who he is. Yeah. Number two, the spirit of prophecy. The centerpiece and the cornerstone of the Bible is Christ. Amen? Amen. He is the stone that the builders rejected. Ah. All 66 love letters tell the history of his story. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, yeah. and the Word was God, yeah. and the Word became flesh yeah. and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Yeah. We are not looking for another Christ, yeah. because he was the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Yeah. He told John the Baptist when John was about to be beheaded, yeah. He said, look at the prophecies concerning yeah, me. Uh -huh. Then you'll know who I am. Yeah, sir. Listen to this. A team of professors at Westmount College mathematically calculated the likelihood that Jesus is indeed the Messiah and came up with a number. The number of 10 times the 157. And fulfilling just 48 prophecies of the 456 prophecies. You know what kind of number that is? That's a 10 with 157 zeros behind it. So to even have the thought enter our minds that he is not who he said he is or what the scripture says is beyond foolishness. Yes. He is the anointed one who preached the gospel to the poor in spirit. He is the one who fed the hungry 4,000 yes. and the hungry 5,000 who opened up the blind eyes and caused the deaf to hear and delivered all those who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Yes. He had been spoken of ever since Genesis chapter 3 yes, as the promised seed of the woman who would come to crush Satan's head. Come on now. Since that prophecy came, the rest of the Bible is a drama that unfolds of the fight between Jesus and being born and making it to the cross to gain, yeah, to yeah. regain the souls of men. Yeah, yeah. We see the enemy sacrificing children to try and stop Jesus from coming through the womb. Yeah. 
And we see him trying to defile the lineage and the bloodlines through sinfulness and rebellion. Yes, Lord. The enemy gets into the heart even of one of Jesus' disciples to betray him. And he gets into the religious leaders and the Roman government to crucify him. But that was prophecy as well. All right. But the word says in 1 Corinthians 2 and 8, if they had known that they would be destroyed and man redeemed anyway, then they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Yeah. So when Jesus comes up out of the grave, he says, all power, oh. all authority in yeah. heaven and earth has been granted unto me. Therefore, yeah. go and make disciples of all nations. Yeah. He is the Lamb of God, yeah. slain yeah. from the foundation of the world. He is Emmanuel, God with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful counselor. Yes, the everlasting yeah, father. Lord. The mighty God. Yeah. The prince of peace. And yeah. of his reign and government, the Bible says there shall be yeah. no end. Yeah. Uh -huh. Every time something happened concerning Jesus, the word says, this happened that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Yeah. Right? Or it says, then the disciples remembered that the scriptures had said this concerning him. Yeah. Yeah. All biblical prophecy speaks of Christ. And any New Testament prophecy should be glorifying him and pointing people to him at all times. Yeah. Uh, Moses spoke of his coming as that prophet in Deuteronomy chapter 18. That everyone will have to listen to and, and obey. And if they do not, they will be destroyed. Uh -huh. Those stiff-necked people almost drove Moses crazy. Come on, Doc. Trying to serve the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Peter says, but we have a more sure word of prophecy concerning Christ himself, yes. whose ministry continues until this day. It was his glory that Peter, James, and John beheld on the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter said, we didn't follow cunningly devised fables, yeah. but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, yes. which leads me to my next point. Point number three. The accounts of many witnesses, natural and spiritual, is another reason why you should believe in the sufficiency of the scroll. Amen? We don't have to add nothing to it, and we certainly can't take nothing away from it. All right. Jesus appeared for 40 days after his resurrection on many different occasions yeah. to his followers and even on the road to Emmaus to yeah. two disciples. Yeah. The Bible says that Jesus expounded at the beginning of Moses and all throughout the Psalms and the prophets, all the scriptures concerning him and how that Christ must suffer to come into his glory. Yeah. In other words, Jesus witnessed concerning himself. Yes, and they said in Luke 24 and 32, did not our hearts burn within us as he opened up the scriptures and the way to our minds? Uh -huh. Angelic witnesses were at the tomb and they testified, he is not here, but he is risen uh -huh. as he said he would. He appeared to Mary first and then to ten of the disciples that were gathered. Because Thomas was absent, and then he came back and appeared to them again when Thomas was present. Mm -hmm. All of these are eyewitnesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They ate with him, and they stuck their fingers in the holes in his body yes. to see if it was him, ah. if he was indeed alive, and he was not a ghost. Yeah. He was not a spirit. Right. When Jesus ascended up from the Mount of Olives, over 500 people witnessed it. And once again, two more angelic beings said, this same Jesus that you see going up into heaven, so shall come in like manner uh, in the clouds in the future. Yeah. Amen. He's coming back, church. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said concerning the Father, the Father witnesses of me, and I don't have to testify of myself, even though I can if I want to. That's right. The Father, how did he do it? He spoke from heaven. At Jesus' baptism and during his transfiguration, transfiguration as a witness to all, yeah. saying, This is my beloved son yeah. in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he told Peter, Be quiet and listen to what Jesus had to say. Peter was out there bowing. Blah, 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 blah. Lord, can we make a tip for you and make a tip for Moses? Make a tip. He said, Be quiet and listen to what Jesus has to say. Come on now. 
God Almighty had not spoken audibly since Mount Sinai when the people were afraid of him and they said, we're going to die if God talks to us anymore. Yeah. Let Moses only speak to us, Lord, and we'll do what you say. Ah. Jesus told the religious leaders, he said, you search the scriptures, for in them you believe that you have life. But they are the very witness or the testimony of who I am. Yeah. And yet you still won't come to me I that you might have life. I'm talking about witness today. I Amen. He said the works that I do, I they bear witness of me and who I am. If you don't believe me, then believe the works. Hey. Believe for the works' sake. How hey. many religious people have the book, not but believe not on the Christ hey, of the book? Right. John 1 and 5 says that there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Come on, and there are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. Uh -huh. And these three agree in one. If we have received the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. He that hath believed on the Son of God has the witness within himself. Yeah. Yeah. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, yeah. because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Listen, y'all. Special things happen when you go down in the waters of baptism. Amen? Yeah. And then you are raised in justification in the Spirit identifying publicly with the death of Christ. Oh, no. The mystery of communion which of the blood and the body of Christ with believers from all over the world is a spiritual witness, mm -hmm. a work of renewal and body and evidence to the world that we belong to him. Yeah. And that he is alive in our midst. He said, do this in remembrance of me. When the Holy Spirit in his prerogative baptizes people in his fire it is his witness to all that Christ is risen yes. as Lord yes. and that the Gentiles can receive the gift of eternal life and the spirit just like the Hebrews of the first church amen remember that they were upset because Peter went and preached to the Gentiles yeah. and they received the Holy Ghost too come on now Everything concerning the testimony of the Father about the Son is a matter of public record. And all of the common folk could testify of Jesus' wisdom. Amen? Amen? For they had said, never a man spake like this before. They didn't know that the scriptures had already prophesied that they all would be taught of God. How would that happen? He would come from heaven and take one flesh. Yeah. The woman at the well said, come see a man who told me everything about myself. Isn't this the Christ that should come into the world? And the people of that town told the woman when they came out to see, now we know that this is the Savior of the world. Not because you told us so, but because we have come out here to see for ourselves. What about you today, church? Have you believed the report of the Lord? Yes, Have you tasted and seen that the Lord is indeed good? Yes. Listen to this. Talking about witness. Jesus was blessed when the centurion soldiers said, Lord, I don't need you to come into my house to heal. All I need you to do is send the word. Yeah. And the hour that you send the word will be the witness enough for me. Uh -huh. Which leads me to my next point, point number four. Personal testimony. Yeah. You should know for yourself that the scriptures are sufficient by your personal testimony. All right. You can't convince nobody of nothing if you haven't tried the product yeah. All right. or ate at the restaurant. How are you going to refer to the restaurant if you haven't even eaten there? Yeah. Well, so and so said it was a good place. I thought you might, might want to try it. How can you? Uh, refer anything, or how can you recommend anything uh, if you haven't driven the car, whatever it is. Right. Try it out for yourself first. Right. Jesus said that we have to take up our cross daily and follow him yeah. to be yeah. his disciple. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be in this thing. Yeah. Amen. We didn't take the name disciples off the name of St. Paul Church so people could stop being disciples. 
Because you were supposed to be a disciple anyway. All right. All right. Amen. Nobody should have to tell you to be a follower of Christ because that should be a part of your personal testimony. Yes, sir. We believe because he first loved us. Unless you haven't experienced his love at all. Yeah. We believe because he brought us out of the muck and the mire. And he put our feet on a rock to stay. Yeah. We believe because when we cried out to him, he answered from his holy hill and he rescued us. We believe because when we lifted up our voice and said, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. He came into our hearts like a superhero yeah. and broke the chains of sin and death. It translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love. Some of us knew that death was hanging on us. And if God had not moved when he did, we wouldn't be here today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. But one day we picked up an old dusty Bible. Yeah. And found the old Romans road and read, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We started to get hope. Yeah. Because right up there it says, but if you believe in your hearts and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. Yes, sir. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes, yes. Now I got a testimony. Yes. I got my own gospel to tell. Yes. The gospel of Carl Jones. Yes. He's a wonder in my soul. Yes, yes. Jesus is alive. He brought me out without a doubt. Yeah. He looked beyond my faults yeah. and he saw my need. Yeah. He washed my sin sick soul, yeah. healed my body and made me whole. Now I'm yeah. ready for Jesus. Yeah. 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 I know the love of God has been poured out in my heart by the Holy Ghost who was given yeah. to us. I know that I've passed from death to life because I love the brethren. Yes, sir. Before I ain't care about nobody. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to punch you in your face yeah, rather than to talk to you. Yeah, I can tell you today personally that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us yeah. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. I got a personal testimony. Yeah. Jesus said, no man can come unto me except the Father draw him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was 30 years ago last month that God broke me down and he wooed me unto himself. And I said yes to his will and yes to his way. Do you know him? I wonder if you know him. Yeah, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart today. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man open to me, then I will come in and sup with him. I'll have fellowship with him. That's the promise. And when you ask Jesus into your heart, he'll come in and make you a brand new creation. Yeah, which leads me to my fifth and final point. We believe in the validity and the sufficiency of the Holy Scriptures because of all the promises of God. The Lord has magnified his word above his name. And there may be no greater evidence of this than all of his wonderful promises. All of the heavens testify to the glory of God. Even our own consciences tell us that he's real. I don't care if he's an atheist or antagonist. God lets you know that he's real. Even our own consciences tell us that he's real and that he exists and that because of the life we have lived, we deserve punishment because we have offended our holy God. You already know you deserve hell. But his authority over all his works and what makes him God yes. is the standard that he has lifted his word up to. Yes, all right. The grass withereth, yes. the flower faded, but the word of our God stands forever. forever. Yes. No one knows exactly how many promises there are in the Bible yes. uh, that will cause someone to believe. Some say there are 3,000, 4,000, and on the high end, some say over 8,000. But if you could just get a hold of one or two of them, you can ride them all the way into eternity. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. That's a promise from God. Don't you see the world is hopeless today? Yes. Because despair seems like it's covering the land like a thick quilt and settling in. We all need to hold on 
to the promises of God. The word of the Lord testifies of itself and tells you it's worth believing as a worthy foundation of hope. Psalm 12 and 6. It says, The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth. Yeah. Purified seven times. Mm -hmm. We get more excited about purified water than the purified word of God. Listen, there's nothing hidden uh, behind God's word. There's no craftiness. There's no sleight of hand. Amen. God says what he means, and he means what he says. Exactly. God ain't trying to psych nobody out. No, trying to give you some doubt and then boom, take it back real quick. Yeah. He's not an Indian giver. He's not like man at all. Yeah, yeah. All the promises of God in him are yea. Mm -hmm. And in him, amen. Uh -huh. Unto the glory of God by us. Uh -huh. First, Second Corinthians verse 1 and 20. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. He's looking for somebody. To show himself strong in their behalf. Yeah. On those whose heart is perfect towards him. God is trying to bless somebody. Uh -huh. Who believes in his faithfulness. Yeah. The promises of God. Yes, sir. In his word bring us closer to him. Ephesians chapter 2 starting in verse 8. It says for by grace ye are saved through faith. And not of yourselves. It is the yeah. gift of God. What a promise. Yes. Yeah. That at that time you were without Christ, yes. being aliens from the covenant of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, oh, yeah. having no hope and without God in the world. Yeah. But now, but God, but God, but, God. but, God. Huh? but now in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes afar off are made nigh or near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. Yes, he is. If that's Ephesians 2, verse 8, then 12 through 14, 8. We are now partakers, church, in the blessings of the commonwealth of Israel. Uh -huh. And we have access to the covenants and the promises of God yeah. as one family that was engrafted in yeah. into this living tree. We are adopted in the beloved because he promised. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need your approval. I am a son of God. Yeah. For as many as believed on him, to them gave he the right to become the sons of God. John chapter 1 and verse 12. I don't know about you today, but I'm into the promises of yeah. God. Yeah. Are you into the promises of God today? Yeah. Jesus is our promise of peace yes, between God and the Father and sinful man. Uh -huh. He is the propitiation. For not just our sins, but for the sins of the whole wide world. Yeah. He is the mediator of a better covenant, yes. which was established upon better promises. Yes, Hebrews 6, verse 6. For he has sworn forever that thou would be a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Uh -huh. That's a promise from the father of the eternal priestly ministry yeah. of Christ unto us. Thank God that Jesus is praying for us. Yes. Thank God that Jesus is interceding for us yes. right now. Yes. Amen? Amen. Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, Satan desires to sift you as weak, but I have yes. prayed for you yes. that your faith would not fail. Yes. God lifts up his hand and swears by none greater than himself and binds himself to his own oaths. Exodus 32 and 13. He says in Psalms 89, starting at verse 34. He says, Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. Yes. My covenant I will not break, yes. nor will I alter the thing I have uttered out of my lips. Yes. Once I have sworn by my holiness, that I will not lie unto David, his seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before him. Yes, the promises of God. Yes. God's holiness is at stake. If he slips up on his promises, but he won't, and he can't, because he's God. Yeah. God sets his rainbow in the sky as a promise. 
yes, as an oath to the earth and all of all of its creatures that he will never again destroy the earth with the flood. Yes. Now, how y'all crazy folks out there go steal God's rainbow sign of mercy and turn it into a symbol of your sin and abomination? Oh, what do you think you're doing? All you're doing is bringing judgment on yourself. Foolishness. It is God's mercy that we are not consumed. Don't play around with God's mercies. Great is thy faithfulness. Listen to this. Only God can promise eternal life. 1 John 2 and 25. It says, and this is the promise that he had promised us even eternal life. Next one. Romans chapter 9, starting at verse 6. It says, children of the promised seed yes. are the true descendants yes. of the faith of Abraham. Yes. That's in your Bible. Yes. This is what it says. It says, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Yes. Neither because they are of the seed of Abraham are they all children of Abraham. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. All right. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And we know that was Isaac. Mm -hmm. Everybody that they put on the TV screen is not Israel, church, All right. because they tell you that they are. Just because they are in the land doesn't mean anything. And all genealogical records have been destroyed. That's right. You have more right to that land than anyone else right now because of his promises to the children of faith, which we are. Yeah. Until the root gets right with God. Romans chapter 11. We don't even know who we are today because we have not read and believed the promises of God. Go ahead, boy. God has promises that are unconditional uh -huh. and have nothing to do with our faithfulness. That's right. Genesis chapter 13, starting at verse 14. He says, I am going to bless you, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. <laughs> the Lord said to Abram, after that lot was separated from him, I want you to hear that. God is speaking after Abram has separated from Lot. This has nothing to do with Lot. Lift up thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you seeth, Abram, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Nothing to do with Abraham's faithfulness. God says he's going to do it, he's going to bless him, and nobody can stop him. Verse 16, and he says, I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. Y'all see that? And so my question to, today to you is, is the dust of the earth in the country of Israel now? Is the dust of the earth there now? The answer is no. Then where is the dust of the earth? It's still scattered. Yes. Child of God, that is your inheritance as well. Genesis 28 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. He spoke to Jacob when he sojourned in the promised land. God speaking here. He says, and behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all the places where thou goest, and I will bring thee again unto this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of. Yeah. God is going to bring his promises to pass. Psalm 105 and 8, he hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Then there are different promises which have yes. conditions that need to be met before we can gain the full benefits. Yes. Hebrews 10 and verse 35. It says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience. Come on, let your neighbor say, You need some patience. You need some patience. That after you have done the will of God, are you doing the will of God? Uh, conditions uh, that you might receive the promise for yet a little while and he 
that shall come, will come, and not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but we are of them that believe unto the saving of the soul. We are those that hang on until the end. That's who we are. The bottom line is this. God is faithful to his word. Yeah. yeah, there are even promises concerning the gospel. Yes. When you look at Acts chapter 2, verse 39, it says, For the promise is unto you and unto your children, and unto all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. How many of us talk about the Gentiles? Amen. Yes. And promises for everybody. Yeah. God is promising this way of salvation for everyone. Not just the Hebrew people who came to the Lord first. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Mm -hmm. not, to, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, yeah. who is the father of us all. Romans 4, verse 16. I just told you that. The promises for everybody. His promises are also offered to us so that we can become more like him in every way. How many want to be like Jesus? Okay. How many want to be like Jesus in every way? Yeah. Second Peter 1, verses 3 and 4. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. God has given us everything, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly through the knowledge of him. I want you to hear me today. You need to know him. Yeah. That have called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Yeah. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, we have confidence in the promises of Scripture. Because the testimony of Joshua 21 and 45, which says, Not a word has failed of any good thing which the Lord has spoken to the house of Israel. All has come to pass. Mm -hmm. These are just some of the reasons we believe in the sufficiencies of Scripture. Amen. Amen. The nature of God. Prophecy. Eyewitness accounts. Holy witness accounts. Heavenly witness and earthly witness. Amen. Yeah. Personal testimony. Your own conscience. Creation. And the promises of God, all of these are reasons why yeah. we believe in the sufficiency of the scriptures. Now, at this point, if you refuse to believe, it simply comes down to your matter of choice and not lack of proof or evidence. Everything concerning the testimony of Christ is now a matter of public record. Ah. You can search it out. You can study it. You can archive it for yourself. Yes, sir. I saw something the other day about how Sodom and Gomorrah is still burning. They did. Yeah. They showed the pure 100% sulfur, the brimstone that came down from out of heaven. Yeah. Right by the salt, right by the, the salt sea. God left the witness. Yes. Yes, it's still there. Yeah. On the mountain of Ararat. Yes. The ark of Noah is still there. Yes. Right. It's still there. Yes, sir. Everything concerning the testimony of Christ is a matter of public record. Yes, sir. And so my question is, did you read the book yet? Woo! Jesus told his disciples that you are cleansed through the word that has been spoken unto you. The scriptures will make you clean inside. Won't it make you clean yes, inside? Amen. All of these concepts, such as repentance from sin, the existence of sin and of Satan, how man has offended a holy God. Judgment, retribution, the vengeance of the Lord, eternal damnation, demons, Woo. loving your enemies, confessing your sins to one another, ah. forgiving one another, and you must be born again. All of these things, no one in their flesh or in their right mind wants to deal with or believe, naturally speaking. That's right. So in no way are any of these doctrines made up by the white man to trip a brother up. Yeah. Now, this is straight up God 
in your face, begging you to be reconciled to him through us. For he hath made Jesus sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. Do you know him today? Do you know him today? Don't you see the spiritual attacks that's going on yes. against God's prayer warriors and watchers? Yes. Yes. And it's only by his promise of grace that we stand here today. That's right. That's right. For he says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That's a promise from God. Yes. Do you know him? He don't owe none of us nothing. Not but every day when he wakes us up, we're walking in that day's promise right. of a choice. And so I admonish you today to choose him, yes. to make him your choice. Amen. If you don't know him today, now you can make your peace with God. You can make your peace with the Lord today. And yes. you can find out for yourself why you yes. need to believe yes. that the scriptures are sufficient. Amen. Will there be one today? Will there be one? Well, praise the Lord. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap. Yeah, yeah, well, praise yeah. Yes and amen. Come on, receive your pastor. Amen. Yes. 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 witnesses all throughout the Old Testament and New Testament. The testimony is personal, general, and altogether spiritual. The conscious, the promises of God, his creation, and his invisible attributes. Ooh. There's stuff that we don't see like angels, and but we know that they're real. There's stuff that we don't see like demons, but we know that people are possessed and we see yeah. people being angry, hateful, mean, um, cantankerous, old folk getting mm -hmm. set in their ways and don't want to change. And they, mm -hmm. they, they cut you out, mm -hmm. pull their gun on you and want to shoot mm -hmm. you and stuff because you just don't know any better. That's a spirit. His sexual immorality is invisible. But it's, it's, it's a spirit that has taken on the LGBTQ, T, U, Z, W, X, Y, Z. And with all of that, you got this movement and you got all this stuff. Abortion, that's a spirit. Oh, that's a murderous spirit. See, y'all just looking at it as terms. Y'all hear the word abortion, you think about a woman or a young lady making a choice to, to get rid of a baby because she can't take care of it, can't be responsible for it, whatever. It's more than that. It's a murderous spirit. You want to get deep into it? It's a murdering spirit. That's what it is because it's a life. Mm -hmm. It is a life. It's a complete yeah. life, yeah. whole life, especially once it's gone up to 14 weeks, 13, 14 weeks, it's already developed into it's a baby. It's either girl or boy. It's not a, it's not a he, she. Mm -hmm. It's not something with uh, two genders, even though there's some people like that in the world. Yeah, but in, that's, you know, there's no answer to that either. You gotta go back to the garden, you gotta go back to the fall. That's the only way you can answer that is because we're living in a broken world. Yeah. And so when you have people that's disformed or disfigured or whatever the case may be, have maybe two genitals, two, mm -hmm. two genders or whatever, then you you uh that's that goes back to the fall. We're in a broken world. It goes back to the garden when Adam and Eve disobeyed and sinned against God. And so uh that was a tight message. I yeah. heard everybody yeah. message and uh, YouTube will give us at 